it's a really bad one if I really need it. <laughs> you have a one second. Oh, my goodness. Good, all right. Look at this still good. That is Roger. Yeah, good guns can you win. I mean, to win uh, wouldn't be bad. What's that? Why do you say that? Nope. Going for the inside line. Trying to stay out of the fancy. <laughs> well, Mike Clue, John Tomek, Denise, all having a chat to our interviewer there. And there they are, down at the start, and away they go. The men on the way right now. They're going to cover some six laps of this 6.7 kilometer course, plus the starting leg as well. The start then is very important. Last time when we had our rounds here, Frischnet was the leader. Price was second. Zadimlek was in third place and rocketing away at the front. Guess who it is? John Tomek himself. Tinker Jurez with him as well. That's good to see Tigger Jurez chasing after John Tomac already at the start of this race. The dust is flying and they've already spread this field out. This is going to be fast and furious, this one. A lot of scores be settled and John Tomac is determined, I think, have already proved in the downhill that he is a great all-rounder. And the rest of them are off the bike. A Tomac it was that's riding up this slope. Can he stay away? The rest are wallowing in his wake. We're going to take a short break now. The dust settles on the course. Do come back to us in a minute. Twenty-five, two hundred and fifty, and five hundred CCs. All the thrills, all the Grand Prix, all the great moments of the 1993 Motorcycle World Championship. In the tracks of the three times champion, trying for a fourth triumph. Hello, I'm Wayne Rainey. Watch me go for four or five hundred CC World Championships on Eurosport. The World Motorcycling Championship, the European Grand Prix in Barcelona, Sunday live at midday and at 5 p.m. here on Eurosport. Well, welcome back then. As uh, here we are on the third lap, uh, as Zodibnek leads the riders through. This has been a very close fought race. They've got up to Chamac, who set a hot pace early on. The Dublin winner a few years ago, the San Sebastian, San Sebastian Grand Prix, is a real tough character indeed, and in fact it's nice to see the world champion begin to get himself up there as well. Denise not had a very good start to the year so far, but he's now trying to try and get amongst the, the leaders right now. This is a real close one, and it's nice to see mountain biking so closely fought. Nope, discard the bloke on his motorbike, he's not involved. So Frischnet going through, in the blue. And Tomac, if he could win this, by the way, both the, the downhill bit and the, uh, the cross-country bit, that would really be a turn-up for the books. Tinker Jurez win, there's Krek coming through, and uh, the rest of these riders spread out at the moment behind him. Uh, Gary Ford, the British rider, just go seen him go through. He's with a nice group of riders here. This is a cracking race, by the way. Look at them, how close they are packed together. And we're well in toward the back end of this race, and still you could throw a blanket over these riders, and they still wouldn't know who's going to win. Denise goes through. And Klug hammers through. Klug has had some stomach trouble, and there Durez goes through. He's not been too happy, actually, uh, Klug has so far. He was uh, a bit sick. In fact, he didn't ride the last round we covered, and, uh, but he's come across here to Ansanan as Frischneck goes through. There's Kluger in the yellow, riding his own bike to mount the world uh, cyclocross champion, who then became an extremely good mountain bike rider as well. Well, they really are spread out right now. This is uh, a great race. Zodrek has dropped back a bit there, number 21. You can just see him there on your screen. But he was the one who set the early pace when he came through. Now he's beginning to struggle for it. On his way through then, that's uh, Daniel Bruschi of Italy. Bruschi always challenging for the, the top honours. Being hotly pursued by Peter Hrek, who did a surprising ride when we covered the race uh, last week, when he got up into second place. And groveling and digging deep at the moment, John Tomas got Tinker Duris on his wheel. And just behind him, Thomas Frischner. And another, well, look at this. Yellow Joe Black just behind him. And there, Hank Denise. We've never seen a mountain bike, bike race like this all this season. This is the fifth round of the Grand Liga. Look at these. One blanket, you can throw the rock at them, and they're still together. This is cracking racing. Absolutely superb. And Canada's brought together, together the best. Tomac, Curez, Krishnek, Zodibliak, and Denise. You couldn't want a better group of riders here. And I know that Gary Ford, the Englishman, he's trying to fight his way up to them as well. Let's see if he can get there, by the way. There's Denise is just being to lose off the pace right now. 
Let's see if Ford's got it. That's been quite, there he is just down the road. That's not far back to Gary Ford as well. This is a cracking race. Peter Hedrick then, just going through behind the Brushy of Italy. This is some ev event this time. Look how close they are. Well, sometimes people have said mountain bike racing for the average spectator on the side of the road can be a bit boring because the gaps open up between them. But today, you wouldn't want to nip down the bookies and put a result on this one, even if it's halfway through, because any of these top half dozen riders could still win this one. Well, I don't know what's happened to Klug. He seems to disappear off the pace a bit at the moment. And there, as Tomac is up the front, Frischnet is running with his bike on his shoulder. Jules is just behind them. Klug behind them as well, dropping a bit of the pace. This shows you the agony, the, the hardness of this, this event, how tough it is for these riders. You know, they're going to race for something like the thick end of three hours. And look at it, how deep they're breathing to get some oxygen into their lungs. Oh, Klug's in trouble, he's just slipped. And uh, this is item number 81, the uh, rider that we saw on the downhill section. He's still in there right now as well. So there's still a lot of cracking riders just behind the leaders. But Kluger is in trouble. I think he's hurt his wrist. Now, remember when we last saw him, he actually uh, destroyed his fingertip. And I think he stopped. I think he has had enough. Brucci, though, is still in there. Brucci from uh, Italy. You got her. Oh. Well, Herrick has taken the trouble to cut his uh, sleeves off his jersey, but I think Klug has had enough. What is going on here? Well, <laughs> well, he probably sorts out his problem. We're on the fifth lap, and Klug has said, wasn't his hand. He has, in fact, got a mechanical problem back there, and... Look at that rock stuff they've got to ride over. You imagine trying to stay up on your bike and ride over these conditions right now. They're beginning to me, it looks like they're going to lap. There we are, a rider in front. It just shows that the difference in ability between this man, Frischnet, his ability as a world uh, cyclocross rider at the highest level on his way through. Tinker Jurezo closing up on him. Well, see, Juris, he's got his uh, inner tube stuffed in his back pocket, and so far he doesn't seem to use that one, so he hasn't uh, punctured yet a while. And uh, Zadrilek for GT, again, one of the more elderly riders, uh, 31 years of age, which shows the stamina comes into it. And Frischnet looking back over his shoulder, Famous son of a famous father, by the way, the cross country world amateur champion, junior cross uh, champion. Well, he's only, what, some 23 years of age, but Tinker Jurez, look at those wiry legs as he tries to get his bike going. He's done a great ride. Normally, by the way, he doesn't finish because he managed to puncture. He rides for Kleiner, who makes these aluminium bikes. In fact, Kleiner, some of the first people to make bikes of aluminium. They're quite light, they have these, have these very big, thick tubes. Look at John here, powering his bike. Oh, see that, flicked his wheel. Both Jurez and Tomac come from a BMX background. They have that ability to just twist a bike and get through some very difficult parts, of course. But this man in front, the cyclocross uh, champion, is still on his way. What a combination of riders we've got. Cyclocross riders, road riders, BMX riders, mountain bike riders, and the sunshine here, the big crowd, and Tigger Jurez is closing on Frischnet, you can see him. For once, his dinner tubes are still in his back pocket. He's not punctured. What a great hole. Oh, keep your fingers crossed for the last lap that he's not going to puncture. Well, I'm just wondering if he can stay in one piece as Ned Overend comes through. The bold Ned, the grand old man of the sport, was some 37 uh, years of age on Tomac going through. Tomac begin to slide off the pace a little bit now at the moment because uh, certainly it looks like... Uh, Jurez and Frischnet are going to set a feral battle going at the front. Well, Zadrilek still struggling here to stay on the pace. He set the early pace to begin with. He was first out the gate at the start, which is a vital thing to do, but when you're racing for nearly three hours, you soon begin to blow a gasket. Looks like he's probably done it right now. Tinker Jurez then. Let's see what he's doing. This fellow is doing the ride. I've not seen him ride as well as this before, and I think he's going to be now on to one of the best rides he's ever had. This is a good performance as far as Tinker's concerned. Fishnet, bike on his shoulder. Well, it looks like right now that uh, Juarez is beginning to take his uh, revenge and begin to put some pressure onto people like uh, Fishnet, who's now beginning to struggle. He's not going to like this at all. Well, we're seeing a right turn up for the books then as they begin to change places. Yeah, hang in there, man. 
Hang in there. Yeah, I think you damn well should hang in there at the moment because Herrick's coming up as well. This is a great ride. Uh, Gary Ford is not far back off the pace as well as Peter Herrick here. He's challenging for that lead. Frischnick, Tinker Juris, and uh, Herrick all closely locked together. So Herrick not far back down. Brushy, Gary Ford still hanging on in there. The top seven as well. Can do it. Do Look it. at this. Go. Go on. Here he is then. Sadri Black. Just look at his face, the pain he's in. He's got to hang on in there. Oh, well, steaming downhill then, Tinker Jerez has really put the pressure on. This is a cracking ride by this uh, fellow. Known as uh, David uh, Jerez on the programme, they put him down as David Jerez Tinker, because he's David Jerez is his name, but he's known as Tinker, and he's got past Frischneck. This is a turn up for the books. I've not seen Frischneck headed quite like this before. Uh, a grapper, he finished in uh, second place uh, when Mike Kluger won, but uh, here the American on Canadian soil looks like we might have the first victory to an American, and we've got it. He forced his way past, he's got that victory, the first victory this year in the Grundig series by an American. Frischneck then is going to be content with second place. Well, that's a real turn up for the books. He was